everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to make a necklace using beads from the Magical Mystery Bead Box from Jesse James. So this is the March box. It is Pantone Classics this month and oh my goodness, they were just some beautiful beads. I've got everything mixed in here together and I've already used some of them in another necklace that I will link in the description box below. But look at all the pretty, just gorgeous beads in there. So, um, Jesse James Magical Mystery Bead Box. That's what I'm using. 99% of, or 95% of what I've got out here today is from the box. Um, if you're interested in subscribing to that box, I will put a link in the description box below. Or if you just want to go buy some of their beautiful beads. Um, and I do get a small commission if you use my link. But you don't get charged anything extra. So, it doesn't cost you anything to use it. And it does help... Um, Help my, help my channel. So um, if you're able to do that, that is awesome. I will put the link in the description box below if you're interested. So here's what you're going to need for today's necklace. You're going to need the tassel, one of the tassels that was in the box. Now you can use any tassel that you have. Um, it doesn't have to be from there. I have this large, um, I love these. I think they're so, so pretty. Look at the rosettes on this. These are metal rosettes on this bead. So this is that bead that I've got right there. Um, I have got four of these cool little um, hex cut or English cut. I'm not sure what they're called. Uh, little crystal beads. They're beautiful. I have got two of the small rondelle crystal beads. These are six millimeter. I think four by sixes maybe. I have got a few pieces of the chain reaction. Now this was the chain reaction. I believe it was number 17. Let me see here. Yeah, chain reaction number 17, so item 6471. Um, and I used parts of this in another necklace last night. So that's why I have this cut into pieces. And I will link that in the description box below if you want to watch that video. But I saved and I, I said on the video to hang on to your pieces of the chain reaction because we would use it in another project. So here it is. So these are the long metal pieces and the, the smaller connector in between. I've got four of them. Now you could use any chain you have. It doesn't have to be this. Or you could make, you know, if you want to take metal beads and connect and make some things like this, you could. Okay. So that is four pieces of that chain reaction. I have got four noodle beads and four eye pins. Now, if you don't have noodle beads, and I'm not sure how long these noodle beads are either. Let me measure them. They are about, yeah, a, about an inch and a half noodle beads. Okay, if you don't have noodle beads, you could take an eye pin and just put seed beads across here, silver seed beads if you wanted to. Um, that would give you the same effect, and you could even bend it a little to, to mimic the noodle. Okay, so I've got four noodle beads and four eye pins, and I'll show you how I, I just put the eye pin in there, but I'll show you that here in a second. Um, and then you're going to need some other eye pins, too, because we're going to be making links. I have a lobster claw clasp. I have a ring for my lobster to hook onto and a jump ring to hook my lobster on my chain with. And then I have two nine inch lengths of just a regular um, antique silver chain. I just picked this out to kind of match this tassel. I know it's a little bit bigger than the links in the tassel, but that's what I'm using. Um, and then I think that's everything. So then you're gonna need your tools, okay? So if you want to make this necklace, and like I said, you can use any beads you have. You don't have to have these specific things. So just get together what you've got and we'll get started. So we've got our tassel here. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a link with this bead. One thing that I did forget is these holes in this bead are big. And I think my eye pin, well, no, it doesn't look like it's going to go through. It might be okay. I was afraid it would go through, but I think it's okay. All right. So we're going to just create a link. So to do that, you're going to take your bead, put it on your eye pin, bend your eye pin at a 90 degree angle. Then you're going to cut it, and I leave about that much. I don't know how much that is, but that's what I leave. You just learn after a while. You learn what, what works for you, because I don't like my loops to be too tiny. Then you take your round nose pliers, and you're just going to roll this loop back. And there we have a little connector right here, okay? That's going to go right on our tassel. So now we're going to make some connectors with these other beads that we've got. So same exact idea. 
you're just going to take your eye pin and put your bead on just like this again you're going to bend it at a 90 degree angle we're going to cut and then we're just going to take our round nose pliers and create a loop okay so there that is that loop turned out a little wonky you can straighten it up if you need to okay now we're going to take our noodles and we're just going to insert our eye pins through our noodles okay so a lot of your eye pins you'll find are kind of bent anyway so just stick your noodle right on it like this and then what we're going to do over here and now this is a little bit um, important that you do this right we're going to create a loop and you want your loop to face the same, you want both loops to face the same way. So I am going, because this loop is facing, you know, up and down, it's not, it's vertical, not horizontal. I am going to take this and I'm going to bend it down. So when I roll this loop back, it's going to create the same, uh, it's going to be in the same positioning as the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. And then when I take this and I roll the loop back, okay, as you can see, they're both facing the same direction. And you wanna do that with all four of your noodles. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same thing again. Just roll it up. And see they're facing the same direction if they're not for some reason like say I did this one I'll show you say I did this one completely wrong say we went like this okay and when I roll this loop back it's completely see the wrong way let me get it to where it's even a loop okay so see this it's it's the wrong way it's kind of facing wrong what I would do is I would take my pliers I would hold one loop in one hand, one in the other hand, and I would just twist them until they're both facing the direction that I need them to face. Okay, and let me close this one up. They have to be closed up really good, that's important. All right, and then I kind of actually want them to be facing up and not down like this. So, because my noodle is twisted that way, so then I would just take them and Twist them up the way you can manipulate these little loops however you want them to go. Now see this one needs to come up. So I'm just going to hold this one while I twist the other one. And now they're both facing the direction that I need them to face. Okay, so that's how that works. It's kind of a little weird, but it'll work if you keep twisting them. Hold one and then twist the other on the direction you need it to go. And this is a shorter eye pen it looks like here. See if I can even get the loop. I think I can. There we go. And see these two, I've got this one facing wrong. So I'm just gonna hold this one in my plier and I'm gonna take this plier and I'm gonna twist it up just how I need it to be, okay? And just make sure that your noodle, you know, you want them to be facing up on your noodle. So just fiddle around with them until you get them right. Okay, so here we've got our four noodles. We have our bead links and we have our chain reaction, okay? Two pieces of our chain reaction is what we're gonna use right now. So we're going to take this and we are going to hook the tassel right onto this really pretty flower bead. So just open it up, hook it right on there Make sure you close your links really good, okay? Make sure you're not leaving any space in between for things to come apart. Okay, and here's what we've got. Now, I'm going to take my chain reaction and I'm going to hook it right to the pin here. So, let's go ahead and open this pin up. I am going to hook one piece of chain reaction on this side. Oh, you know what, these little holes may be too small. No, they're not. Okay. So I'm going to hook one piece on there and one piece on here. So when I close this, I'm 
and get it closed really good. You do not want these coming out, and they are tiny, so they, they're they thin. So they could come out if you don't have your loop closed really good. So when I close it, I have this. Okay? All right. So now we're going to take our noodles, and we are going to... This is really important, okay? You want to hold your noodle to where it looks like a smiley. A little smiley. You want to open your link, and you're going to hook your chain reaction on here. And then you're going to close your link back up. Make sure it's closed really well, because both the noodle and the chain reaction will slip into that loop if it's not closed really well. Now, what I do is I lay this down and I make sure that the chain reaction is hanging on the bottom part of that loop and that everything is flat, okay? So then we're going to open this one and we're going to do the same thing, hooking this on. But what you want to make sure in between each one is you just wanna make sure that the pin is twisted the right way, your chain reaction is laying flat, and your noodle is in the smiley face position, okay? So just like this. And you just wanna make sure that everything is laying, um, you know, nothing's binding up or twisting. That's really important with this, because if it's binding up or twisting, it's, it's not gonna lay right when you go to put it on. Okay, so just make sure. See, like this one is kind of flipping up there. There we go. Get back down. Why are you doing that? Okay. And I want to do that in between each thing that I add on here. I want to make sure that everything's flat. So I'm going to take this, one of these English cup beads, these really pretty ones, and I'm going to hook this right on this loop. Again, keeping it laying like it's supposed to lay and then I'm going to close it up. I will push this together. Then I'm gonna lay it back down. Make sure everything's laying right, and this is on right, it is. And then I'm gonna add the one on the other side. And I know it seems like tedious to be like, oh, lay it back down each time, make sure but you really, it will make a difference in your necklace, okay? So you don't, you've got to make sure everything lays right, it's flat, it's not binding up somewhere or twisted somewhere. It's super important or this is not gonna lay right when you get ready to put it on. And the whole thing about this necklace being kind of unique is that it lays, you know, you want it to lay right when you put it on because of the way that it's created. It's just, um, got a little bit different design to it so again I'm going to take this and see that bead needed flipped up I'm gonna lay it down and everybody looks good now I'm gonna put on my second noodle bead okay so again I've got the noodle bead facing you know with the smiley part facing right up up like it's supposed to I'm gonna go ahead and hook this bead right on and close this up and it gets a little easier once you get the first you know little bit going there okay so as you can see it's not wanting to lay right for me there we go yeah and you may need to take these and twist them it just depends like this one it looks to me like this top wire needs to or loop needs to twist around a little bit and now it's laying better okay so I just I really can't um, tell you how important that is <laughs> to make sure that everything's laying correctly see right now my smiley face is upside down that's not good I don't want that so I've got to figure out okay what's going on there's how it should be why is it flipping And it does take some time, but it's really important. It's important to make sure. See, I've got the smiley face upside down somehow, and I don't know how I did that. So I'm going to just undo this and turn it over. 
somehow I messed that up. I don't know how, but I did. So I'm going to turn it over to where, to where it's supposed to be. Close it back up. Okay. Now it's laying right. At least that part is. Okay, just like that. That's how you want it. And I think I'm just going to leave it laying like this. I'm going to open this link right here instead of the one that's on my bead. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the bead on here because it seems like that might be the easiest way to do it, to keep it how I need it to go. And sometimes you have to turn them, kind of funny, to get the bead on there because you want, you just, it's very important that it lay right. So I want this bead to go top, and let's see, it's, I'm having a hard time getting it on there, but I want it to go like this, because if I hook it on the other way, it's going to twist, okay? Let me shut this one. And, you know, if you lay it down and it's wrong, like I just had the smiley face part upside down on the other side, you can just fix it. See this bead. Why is he acting? See, he's acting weird now. And I might just need to twist something. I might just need to play around with it a minute. So you just have to kind of um, play around with it a little bit. Just make sure that it's laying right. Twist things around if you have to. But it's real important. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there. Now we're going to take our next, and I'm using the rondelle on this one, and I'm going to hook it right to the top, and I want to make sure I hook it to the top of that link that's on the, um, the noodle bead, and close it up. Okay, just like that. Lay your necklace back down. Make sure that everybody's laying right. And there's something weird going on over here on this other side. So let me just take a look at it here. What is going on? Okay, maybe not. Maybe I was just imagining it. <laughs> I'm paranoid. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this guy. Again, we're going to hook it. No, there is something weird going on over here. That one is wanting to twist up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hook this one on because that will force the other one to kind of stay where it belongs. And you may just have to do that. You may just have to hook them together and then come back at the end and straighten things up a little bit because if when you hook this one on the top, it's going to force your bottom one to stay where it's supposed to stay because it won't be able to flip to the top. Okay, so here's my next um, noodle bead. I'm going to open the noodle insert it right onto this one just like that close it up make sure it's closed really good and it's looking good so far okay so I like the way it's laying so I'm just gonna kind of leave it here I'm gonna open this one and I'm going to since it's laying right just insert it right on there like that and close it up Close it up real good. Whoops. Closed it up a little too good there, didn't I? <laughs> okay. So here is what we've got so far. It's looking pretty good. All right. You stay like you're supposed to now. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take our last bead here, our last little uh, bicone or hex cut bead, and we're just going to put it right in. Make sure it's closed up really good and do the same thing on the other side. And again, make sure that they go to the top of your little loop and they're not crossing over anything like going through your um, previous bead loop. And close that up. All right. So now pick your necklace up and look at it. 
And this one seems to be doing okay. And this is what we've got. We have one more noodle to hook on. Here it is. I'm going to open the noodle. And I'm just going to go ahead and hook the bead on. Right here while I've got this bead laying flat, just like that. Okay, and same thing on the other side. I'm going to keep it in the smiley face position <laughs> and open it up. And I know this is like really fiddly to do, but you've got to do it right or it's not going to turn out right. That one just didn't want to open. Okay, so let me lay this down here real quick. So if I've got it like this, this just needs to hook right on like this. Just like that. Okay. And then we'll close this one down. And here is what we've got so far. Now make sure your smiley faces go the right direction. Okay. There's what we've got so far. Now this one feels like this um this noodle feels like this little smiley face up here needs to rotate a little bit so i'm just going to turn it and that's going to help it lay better you can kind of feel it when you are holding it you can feel if it's got some tension okay so there's that now we need our other two pieces of chain reaction and what we're going to do is we're just going to open our noodle and we're just going to insert them right on, one on each side. Okay, just like that. Close it back down. Make sure that your noodle is out of the way when you do. Okay, just like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Holding it in the position that you need it to lay. Open it up. Insert your chain reaction right on there and close it back, making sure that it's closed good and nothing's in the way. Okay, so there's what we've got. Let me pull this down. Now we're going to hook our sides on. And for this, you're going to need a jump ring, which I neglected to get. Let me get a couple jump rings. Okay, so I have two very small silver jump rings. And this is what I'm going to use to hook my little chain reaction pieces to my chain. Okay, so just go ahead and stick it right in here. Hook your chain right on. And close it up. Just like that. Same thing on the other side. And just hook it right on here and close it up. Now this is the point where you would want to pick this up, hold it up, and see if it lays where you want it to lay, okay? Mine does. So I'm just going to lay it down here and I'm going to put my end on, my closure on. So I'm just going to take my jump ring here and I always use a little bit thicker jump rings to hook the lobster clasp on. I just feel like it's a little more secure. So if you notice, it's a bigger and thicker jump ring than that one. I'm gonna hook it right here on the chain like this. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this ring, open it and hook it right on here, and this will be for the lobster to clasp onto. And I'm not gonna do an extender on this one because I'm keeping this one for myself, and um, I measured my length, so I'm good. I don't need an extender on it. Is it gonna go on the chain, though, is the question. My ring might be too big. Sometimes I, there we go, it did. Okay, not a lot of slide there, but <laughs> it goes on. Okay, and just make sure you've got that closed up really good. And here is our finished necklace. So let me put this on a form and I will be right back to show it to you. 
Okay, so here's our finished necklace, and I'm sorry for the loud rumbling outside. Chris has got the motorcycle fired up for some reason. It's so loud. But we've got our tassel down here, and this tassel came this way, but you could trim it if you wanted. Like, if you don't want those little pieces kind of hanging down on the bottom right here, you can just take it and just trim it up with your uh, cutters. I don't know why some of them are a little bit longer than the other ones. There you go. You can always trim that up. Anyway, and we've got our little um, beautiful little rosette bead, which my lighting is giving me issues. There we go. Maybe that's better. Maybe not. Not really. Okay. There's our beautiful rosette bead. <laughs> I don't know why the lighting is. There we go. That's better. Okay. And then um, our noodle beads and our other beads up to our chain reaction and then all the way up to our beautiful... Um, you know our chain up at the top and I just I love this I think it turned out really pretty um, it's very unique and different and I love using the noodle beads because I have tons of them I just never use them for anything so I hope you guys enjoyed this if you did um, subscribe to the channel if you don't ring the bell you won't know when I upload things and I'm doing several subscription boxes and I do tons of tutorials out of each one so um, make sure you ring the bell and yeah um, my tools, I wanted to say really quickly because everybody always asks me, my tools are Zeron. Um, I have a blog where I have linked all of my favorite Amazon products that I use. Um, that's where I got them. And so if you're interested in using those links, I will get a small commission, but it doesn't cost you any more to buy them um, than if you just went on and searched Amazon yourself. So um, it just helps support my channel. So if you want to check out the tools, they're on there, along with some other stuff that I like really well from Amazon. And if you're interested in subscribing to the Jesse James Magical Mystery Bead Box, then um, follow that link and you can check out what they have there. So thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!